Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today I'm going to be doing a solo playthrough of Widower's Wood with four heroes. We've got Creed and Jagger, Vasquez, Skarg, and Agatha. There are two things that I did wrong when I set up the board. First, these two over here by 1 and 5, the spawn areas of 1 and 5, should have been the blowgun bog trogs, not the one over in location 3. So location 3 has two regular bog trogs and the misspeaker, and we've got the two blowgun bog trogs over here. The second thing I didn't explain correctly is when we defeat a misspeaker, we'll get the XP and we'll put that in our XP bank, but we'll also place one XP token on the time tracker sheet. And after we have done have four of those, so essentially we have to defeat four misspeakers, that's when we move to the next step in the story. Just like normal, if you'd like to see how to set up the game, as well as see a little bit about the, uh, the characters themselves, feel free to check out the video before this in the playlist. And actually, it'll be two before this, because I think I also did the prologue, which you're welcome to listen to. I was going to do cool things with the prologue, but it took way too long. So I just I did a, a voiceover of it, and you guys can listen to it and understand the story if you'd like. Let's get going. The first thing we do at the beginning of each round is our event card phase. So we'll draw one event card. We'll grab from here. Now, just so you know, uh, Thomas told me that I made the game a little bit harder by taking out those two ominous environment cards uh, just because of what else is in that deck. I'm cool with it, but if you play this yourself and you want an easier game, feel free to not put in the chaos, uh, the uh, Kickstarter cards if you want. We get Patrol. Roll a die. On a roll of one through four, activate the villain furthest from any hero. On a roll of five through six, determine the space farthest from any hero that has a villain in it and activate all the villains in that space. Let's see what we get. We get a five. So that means we're gonna activate all the, he all the villains in the furthest space from the heroes. Here we are on the board. These are our heroes. We've got our enemies on the board already. What we need to do is determine which, which villains are the farthest away. Whenever you determine that, you always do that based on movement. You can move through certain areas, so like these spots here are considered rough terrain and they provide cover, but you can move through them. Same with these um, water spots, but then certain enemies, uh, I think all of them on the board right now, are amphibious and they actually consider these as clear spaces, so they can move through them like they're clear spaces and they give them cover. So what we do now is we determine which enemies are farthest away. And so this enemy is one, two, three, four. Four far away, oh no, four, five actually, because there are certain things called closed corners and open corners. For this uh, enemy, this enemy, this is considered an open clear space. However, this is an obstacle, and so it has closed corners. So from movement and from fighting, you can't go diagonally. You have to go around. Same thing on this side. So for this enemy to activate, one, two, three, four, five, it'd actually be five movement. Or, no, I'm wrong. It would be one because you can go diagonal in clear spaces. So one, two, three, four. This one, one, two, three, four, and this one, one, two, three. So this is the closest one. This and these ones and these ones are tied. Because these two are tied, what we do is we look at first color priority and then the index number priority. The color priority is always based on the event card we drew. The event card that we drew is blue, this patrol and blue card. So because of that, I think that these enemies are the ones that we're going to activate, which stinks. <laughs> so what we have is the misspeaker and we have two bog trucks. Now, which one do we activate first? We always do that on index priority. If So first color priority. So we've got two blues here and then index priority. And we know the misspeaker is a higher priority. Um, it's a number one versus the bog trogs are four, five, and six. So we'll first activate the, mis, uh, the misspeaker. The misspeaker has tons of different keywords on, on their sheet. And I'll go through that in a second. But to determine their activation, we look down here. So we look on our villain reference sheet and we see what these different uh, icons mean. The first one is we would do a melee attack using our melee weapon uh, if there was an enemy in the, in the current space that we're in. If not, then we would try to use our venom attack and do a ranged attack. The problem is nothing is within a range of two. So then we move to the next one and that's called goad. Goad means activate a villain in this villain space that has a higher priority number. 
Well, this misspeaker is the only one that has the highest priority number. So we'll move to the next one, which means pursue. If the target hero is within three spaces, the villain walks towards the hero. If not, the villain charges towards the target hero. Walking is one step, charging is two spaces. If we look here, the villain, the misspeaker, is one, two, three, four spaces. So because he's four spaces, he doesn't walk towards the closest hero, he charges. And whenever you charge, you move two spaces forward. So the misspeaker just took two leaps forward. Now normally you'd think, well, that's enough, but <laughs> all of these different abilities here, these keywords all mean certain things. And I'm going to show you that because there is something that's going to happen now since they did the pursue action. Here we have the nice key game terms sheet. I scanned it and made a copy, which is really nice, but you can see there's tons of them here. So what I did is I actually printed out and uh, wrote down the specific abilities for the misspeaker. So let's look at those in detail. The first thing is, the uh, misspeaker is amphibious, so it treats water spaces as clear spaces when moving and gains cover while in water spaces. Also, they are a bog trog type. That's simple. Oh, I forgot to um, bold this, but miasma is another ability. A hero hit by an attack made by this character suffers corrosion, continuous effect. Place that token on your character sheet and that can stack. I've confirmed that. And you cannot heal while you have the corrosion token. You basically have to heal the corrosion token first. They're also misrouted, so when a villain with this follows the regroup or goad tactic, which I think I just did, uh, place a mist marker in its space at the end of its activation. And that means any enemies in that location gets a plus two defense. Basically, they're just in cover, which is insane. They also have a spray effect because normally when you attack range, you can't attack range if you have any friendly units in that location. Spray it allows the misspeaker, he doesn't care. He just shoots at you and he might hit friendly units for him. Heh, <laughs> who cares? Last, he's a virtuoso. So the character gains an additional die on the attack and damage rolls and then he drops the lowest die on each roll. Now that I explained to you all of the different things for the miss misspeaker, let me tell you that I already made an error. <laughs> I read the pursue ability, but I actually should have read the regroup ability. That's their last action. And that says if a friendly character is in the villain's space, the villain holds. Otherwise, the villain character charges towards the closest friendly character. So he will just stay here. He's not going to charge forward, but he is going to place a mist token here to give plus two cover for all of the friendly units here. And we'll place that like so. Now we can activate the two bog trogs. <laughs> first we would, and they're both blue, so we'll activate, no, one's blue, one's red, so technically we activate the blue one first since we're in a blue event phase. Uh, first, first icon here says melee attack. So if there was an enemy in the current region or in the current location, they would attack. This means that they would rush. So the villain moves up to two spaces and ends his movement in a target's hero space. After moving, the villain attacks the hero with each of his melee weapons and the first damage roll would be boosted. Well, no target here was within, was within two range. So then we go to the pursue, which I accidentally did for um, the misspeaker. That's done for the uh, bog trogs here. If the target hero is within three spaces, the villain walks towards the hero. If not, the villain charges towards the hero. So both of our bog trogs are gonna charge towards the, the, our, our heroes. If you think about it, it's kind of funny. The misspeaker goes and puts out this mist to protect them and they go, nope, we're gonna charge <laughs> because we're stupid. And we're gonna try and take on five heroes over here. Not a smart idea. Whew, that was a long event phase. Don't worry, normally they won't be that long. <laughs> but now what we do is we move into hero activation. So we're gonna activate Creed and Jagger and the first thing that we have to do is we have to spawn. So we spawn an enemy every at the beginning of every turn. We roll these two dice. One tells us which enemy to spawn, and one tells us which location on the board. So let's see what we get. So we got a five. A five for our um, index numbers is going to be a bog trog, and we're going to spawn them in location one. I'm not going to show you this every time, but just so you guys know, when you are looking to spawn an enemy from the ranks over here, we see which color there's more of. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we have four of each color on uh, in here in the reserve. So then you look at the event color and we're blue. We grab a blue uh, um, spear bog trog and that's one that we'll spawn. We'll place this right here in location five, right next to the blowgun bog trog. Our next step 
is going to be the action phase, and we're going to activate Creed and Jaeger. Now, these are actually two different heroes, so we're going to be able, be able to activate both of them during this turn. Remember the Wolf Call ability? We can now, at the beginning of each of your turns, decide to change which ability we want to use. I think for right now, we're still going to continue at the reposition. We can either do our attack action first, or we can do our move action first. You can choose which way to do it. What we're going to do is we're going to have Jagger take one step, and Jagger cannot charge, but Jagger's going to take a step over here, because what our plan is eventually is we want Jagger to go over here and get that side quest, because he can move pretty well, especially once Creed starts using his wolf call that way. So, and I think we're actually doing it right away, actually. We're giving him um, that reposition ability. So we're going to put him here for his activation. He can't attack. There's nothing here. He doesn't have a ranged weapon. Creed, though, Creed does have a ranged weapon. So we're going to have him attack first. We have to choose which enemy we're going to attack. We're going to attack the blue uh, Spear Bogtrog. In this game, there is no line of sight. Instead, you use range. R, we have one uh, weapon called the double crossbow that has a range of two. That means that we can attack within a range of two, and this blue bog trog, spear bog trog, is within that range. How we determine if we're successful in our attack is we have to do two dice rolls. Each die roll will use two d6s, and what we do is we add in our accuracy to our two d6s, and we compare it to the enemy's defense. So the Spear Bogtrog's defense is 11. They would potentially have uh, additional camo uh, or, uh, defense if they use the camouflage, but these guys are wide out in the open. So they only have a defense of 11. Our accuracy is a five. So we need to get equal to or greater. So that means we need, for an 11, we need six. We need a six or higher. If we chose not to move this round, we could do a hold ability. By doing the hold ability, we would get to roll an additional die for this uh, to, to determine if we hit. That's a benefit if you don't move. But I think I'm gonna have Creed try and move, so I'm only gonna roll two dice. I only need to get a six. That's That should be too hard. Perfect, I got an eight. Eight plus five is what? Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13, that's over the 11. Since we know we have hit, we now have to roll the dice and look at our power and compare our power to the enemy's armor. So this Spear Bogtrog has armor of 12, but we have power of 7 with our crossbow. As long as we roll greater than a 5, because now we have to do greater damage than the armor. It's not equal to, it's greater. If we roll greater than a 12, we hit. And if we go over his armor by five or more, we do two points of damage. But he only has one health, so that wouldn't really help us. We're just looking for a five or higher. Let's see what we get. Ooh, five plus two? Yeah, we took him out. This Spear Bogtrog is no more, and he'll go back into the reserve. We'll also place one XP over here in our treasury. We'll use that at the end of this chapter, as long as we win, to be able to upgrade our abilities. We're gonna use our feat ability here called High Rate of Fire. Once per round, during your turn, you can discard a feat card to make an additional ranged attack against a target within one space of your first target. So we're gonna discard this feat card. And we're okay with that because at the end of each round, we'll draw another feat card as long as we're not incapacitated. And so we'll discard that and we'll do another attack. The only enemy that's two spaces away is this red Spear Bog Trog. We have an accuracy of five, Defense of 11, so we're just looking for a 6 or higher. 4, 5, 6, 7. Yes! So we've hit. Now to determine how much damage or damage that we've done, we compare our, our 7 for our power to the armor of 12. Remember, we have to get greater than that. So we have to get greater than 5. And we got 7. Yeah, took that Spear Bog Trog out. We'll place another XP right in here. And this Spear Bog Trog is no more. Now we can still move Creed. That's the whole reason why I didn't do the hold action, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move Creed diagonally, and I can do that because just like Jagger here, these are all open spaces, so you can move diagonally. So we're gonna place them here, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our reposition ability, which is what we chose as our ability for uh, this round in the wolf call, and we can move either Creed or Jagger one space. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to move Jagger one space into the water here because what we want him to do is to come through on this side and start going to get that side quest. Also, one, two, these, these two work the best when they're three or more apart for spaces because then Creed can refresh his feats all the way up to three each round, which is awesome. But right now, I think they're only two. They need to be a total of three spaces and only two, so that doesn't matter. But that's okay, because we're gonna draw a feet card now, and we'll, we'll be back up to three. Let's draw our new feet card. The final part of our turn is we have to draw a villain card and activate a villain, based on what the card says. Ooh, Silent Death. Activate up to four Blowgun Bogtrogs. If there are no Blowgun Bogtrogs in play, activate the two villains closest to you. Well, we have two uh, Blowgun Bogtrogs out, so we'll activate both of them. The first thing a Blowgun Bogtrog would try and do is hold and aim and try and shoot someone within their range of two. If they do that, they get to roll three dice. Essentially, it's boosted to see if they do damage. So that first roll that we do, they get to roll three dice. So let's see if that's gonna work. Looking here, no one is within a range of two. Because of that, we'll move to the second uh, uh, icon here on our Blowgun Bogtrog. This is a range attack. So if the target hero is within range, the villain attacks the hero with each of its ranged weapons. If the target hero is out of range by only one space, the villain walks towards the target hero and attacks with each of its ranged weapons. So because we had um, Creed move, this Blowgun Bogtrog could take one step into this cover here, and then he has a range of two, one, two, or one, two. He can attack any of our heroes here except for um, Jagger way over here. So now what we have to do is determine, well, who would he attack first? And what we do is we look at the Silent Death card that we drew, and we look to see it says here, highest health. So whichever hero has the highest health, it's going to attack, if it has multiple ones that it can attack. So both Skarg and Agatha have the same amount of health. So now how do we determine which one he's going to attack? This Blowgun Bogtrog will always attack the lowest initiative. So whenever there's ties, even with what this card tells us as our uh, what we should be aiming at, we would always do the lowest initiative. So Agatha is at five, so this Bogtrog is gonna attack Agatha. First thing Agatha is gonna do is use this Pursuit ability. Play this card when a villain within three spaces of you moves to immediately move one space. We'll have to discard this feet card, but then we can use that ability. She's going to take one step in and get closer so that next time she can rush in and attack him. And that's really nice because this guy will not get the cover ability if being attacked by melee. Regardless, Agatha is still going to be attacked. So her defense is 12 and her armor is 15. She's got good armor. But her defense is 12. We're first going to see if this Blowgun Bogtrog can hit the 12, uh, go up, uh, equal to or greater than that defense of 12. This Blowgun has uh, accuracy of 4, so let's see. Oh, yes. 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 is less than 12. Didn't even hit her. Now we'll move to Vasquez's turn, and the first thing we do is spawn an enemy. Ooh, a 6 and a 5. So we're going to spawn a Spear Bogtrog in location 5. We'll place that Spear Bogtrog right here. This feat card that allows him to boost and play this card to boost one of his rolls. He's gonna boost his attack roll. So a boost lets him roll three dice. He's gonna take a pot shot over here at that Blowgun Bogtrog. That Blowgun Bogtrog has three additional defense though. He is in cover for two, plus one because of his camouflage. But Vasquez doesn't care. He gets to roll another die. We have defense of um, 14 because we add three to it and we have accuracy now of five plus these three dice Ooh, 5 10 14 19 yeah totally hit so now we just have to compare armor which is 12 and his power is seven let's see oh <laughs> 12 plus 7 is 19 yeah we took that blowgun bogtrog out and of course another xp for us that Blowgun Bogtrog didn't know it hit him. And then Vasquez is going to end his turn by taking one movement and stepping towards that misspeaker. We've got to beat those misspeakers. That's the goal of the game. I just did not like having ranged enemies, so we've now cleared out the ranged enemies, on this side at least. 
We'll end our activation by drawing a feat card, and now we have to activate a villain. This is always the fun part. You never know. Is it going to be one, two, three, four villains? What is it going to be? We have Fishbait. Activate up to two Bogtrogs closest to you. If there are no Bogtrogs in play, activate the villain closest to you. Well, we've got Bogtrogs in play, but not many, to be honest. Uh, but then remember, this is the targeting initiative if there's ties. Player to the active player's left. So that would be Creed or Jagger. So here's Vasquez. The closest to, let's see, one, two, three, four... One, one, two, three, and one, two, three. So, what it looks like it's going to be is the mist speaker because they he has the keyword Bogtrog. So I'm assuming he's a Bogtrog. And then this blue one will be the second activation. And why it's blue is once again because of our event. Our event was blue and you always do color priority first. So index priority because this is a higher index number. The mist speaker will go first followed by this bog trog. For the misspeaker, first thing we see is melee attack. Well, no one in the current space. Then we would have the range attack. Well, no one was within two for his range attack, so can't do that. Then we would move to goad, activate a villain in this villain space that has a higher priority number. Nothing's there. So the last is regroup. If a friendly character is in the villain space, the villain holds. Otherwise, the villain charges towards the closest friendly character and is going to drop another missed token. So the closest one, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, and I, it's charge, right? Yes, it charges. So this misspeak is gonna go one, two, and then place another uh, mist token here. And don't forget, that mist token only affects range attacks, but range attacks, they, he's gonna have a plus two defense. So here we have the Spear Bogtrog. First, melee attack, can't. Rush, he technically could, except for, if you look at this, he would have to go into cover. Once you move into a cover space, you have to stop your movement. And I think that's what he's going to do. So he would charge, but then get stopped here because it's considered rough terrain. But now he has a plus three defense because he, oh no, yeah, yeah, that's right. Plus three defense because he's camouflaged and he's in cover. Next, we're going to move to Skarg. Let's see what he's going to spawn. Ooh, a two and a five. Ooh, a two is a Swamp Gobbler Pirate. So we'll have one of these, and he will spawn in Location 5. We apparently really like Location 5. <laughs> Everything has spawned over there so far, I think. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to change to this Fast Draw. So we're able to, at the end of this round, we can draw two feet cards instead of one, which is nice. What we're going to do is we're going to rush this misspeaker. We're going to take two steps into here, and then we're rushing this me speaker and attacking him with our melee weapon. Because we're attacking him in melee range, he does not receive cover, I don't think. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's right. We have our um, power of our bow spikes to be a six for accuracy. And we're going to use this feat card to boost this roll, so we get to roll three dice for this effect. And why we're doing that is because as long as we do damage, we get to roll three dice since we rushed into his space this turn. We get to roll three dice for our damage roll. So here's our Miss Speaker. Our Miss Speaker only has defense of 11. The big thing is they have two health. So what I'm going to be trying to do is after I roll to hit and I want to do my damage, I want to at least get a 17 or a five, an 18 so that I can do two points of damage. But first, here's our defense roll. 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, so that equals, plus we had our 5 for accuracy, we've automatically hit. Because we charged, we now get to roll 3 dice for our damage because we charged into that space. And we get a terrible roll. 3, 4, 5, 6, plus our 7 is 13, and that matches his armor, which means he takes no damage. Ouch! We're going to have to end our turn here, and that's such a bummer. We technically could draw two feet cards. We only have space for one, so we're just going to draw one. Let's draw our villain activation card. Well, that misspeaker was pissed. We have close combat. Activate the villain closest to you. Well, that misspeaker is right on top of us. So the misspeaker will use the dagger. We'll roll um, three dice because of the virtuoso and drop the lowest one. Has accuracy of six. Skarg has defense of 12. So let's see what happens. So we roll three. Oh my 
gosh, that's a really high roll. We take this out, six plus six is 12, plus the six here, that's 18. Our defense definitely is hit. So now we'll see how much damage we take. We'll roll three dice. We, they lose the lowest. Oh, man. So six for power, plus six is 12, plus that is, um, what, 17? Fortunately, Scarab's armor is 14, so he actually only takes one damage, not two. Whew. Here's our last hero of the round, Agatha. Starts with the spawning. Ooh, a four and a one. So a four, it's gonna be a Spear Bogtrog in uh, spawning area one. Finally, somewhere that's not the five location. Right over here with this um, Blowgun Bogtrog. Agatha's kinda pissed that Skarg failed his melee attack, which does kinda make sense. He's a ranged dude. So Agatha is also going to charge into here and try and take out that Miss Speaker. The nice thing for Agatha is she has two melee weapons, so she can attack with both of them. Now, the charge that she did, her first weapon, she could get boosted for damage rolls. But the second one, she won't be able to do that. And I should have said that we'll keep herself on the great strength, we'll keep her on the march ability. We're gonna add six to this roll, just making sure that we can get over 11. Six plus five is 11, we're good. So now we get to roll three dice, because we charged in there. And 13, we get, what's our power? Power's eight, so let's see. Oh my gosh, why are my rolls so terrible with three dice? Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 18. Oh, that's enough. Five plus um, 13 is 18. That does two points of damage to that misspeaker and takes them out. We'll place one and two XP into our bank because that's t every time you do damage, you get one XP. And then one here in our time tracker, because remember, once we have four in there, we can spawn those epic club gatormen. We also can remove this me speaker from play. At the end of her turn, she'll draw one feet card. And now on to villain activation. <laughs> Blood in the water. Activate up to four red villains. There's things if we don't have red villains, we have two on the board, so we'll activate both of those. We've got ourselves a blowgun bog trog here and a regular spear bog trog over there that are both red. So this has a higher initiative order number. So he'll go first. His first thing is he will see if anybody is within range and he'll hold and shoot. And unfortunately, if we look at Jagger here, Jagger is, is within a range of two. Whoops, one, two. This is a close corner. So this blowgun um, bog trog couldn't shoot from the corner, but since he has range, it's like he, he has enough range to go around this and into where Jagger is. Jagger's defense is 13, but since it's a hold and aim, the Blowgun Bogtrog rolls three dice. So he's got, what, an accuracy of four. Uh, four plus five is nine, plus four is 13, 14, 15. Yeah, so there's gonna be damage. So now we'll roll two dice for the damage. And I'm just gonna re-roll that one. It's a one. Ooh, six. Six plus nine is 15. Oh, Jagger's uh, armor is 12, so he's gonna get hit. Jagger will take one point of damage. Fortunately, not two. Our second activation will be this red spear bog trog. First, it's melee attack, can't do it. Then it's a rush. So the villain moves up to two spaces and it's moving in a target's hero space. Can't do that. After moving the villain's attacks, the villain attacks the hero with the most, uh, with all of the melee weapons. Can't do it. So his third item is the pursuit. If the target hero is within three spaces, the villain walks towards the heroes. Otherwise, it rushes towards the closest hero. So he is within three. One, two, three. So he's going to walk one space so that he is now closer to uh, Creed over here. That'll end Agatha's turn and end the first round. Before we jump into round two, I did forget something, and I will say that as a, so as a solo game, the hardest thing is remembering all the little different moving parts in this game. Scar got attacked by that misspeaker. He is, should have received a corrosion marker since he, was, he took damage. Now the next time he tries to heal, he'll first have to heal this corrosion marker before he has, can start healing his health. Okay, now to round two.